Now let's come to in linear motion, we used to have a quantity called force, a push or pull which we used to make bodies move. Here, we need to understand a quantity called torque, which pr produces rotational motion. Let's understand what is torque. Torque is denoted by a symbol tau. Whenever a force is acting on a block, it will produce a very simple motion, which is translation. If this is a frictionless table, and there is a block kept on it and I apply some force on it which is passing through the center of mass M is the mass of the block in that case the block will start moving and it will have some acceleration since F0 is the only force and mass of the system is constant F0 will be equal to MA and I will get acceleration of the block will be equal to F0 upon M all of you are aware of this right? yes or no? yes sir yes. now let's go back to torque a similar quantity in rotation, a, a thing which will, suppose I have a rod which is lying on a horizontal frictionless surface. This rod is a thin rod. M is the mass of the rod. L is the length of the rod. Can you tell me what will be the more, if I say this rod is going to rotate about a vertical axis. This is that vertical axis as shown here. This is that vertical axis. Now please tell me what is the moment of inertia of this rod about this axis. Square by three. Yes, we have learned that the moment of inertia about center of mass, centroidal axis, perpendicular to the rod, the moment of inertia about this axis is given by ml square by 12, and the moment of inertia about this axis is given by ml square by 3. Yes, all of you know this. Let's see if I tell you I am going to apply a force on this rod, and I am going to apply that force perpendicular to the rod in a horizontal direction for example the force will be like this we see this the force will be like this as shown with this green this force please understand is green line is not parallel to this axis it is not parallel to the vertical axis here it is in the plane the angle between this rod and this force f0 which is constant is 90 degrees but this force and this rod they both are in the same plane you understand this they are in the same plane are you getting this now please tell me what is the no no need to go like this sir please let me continue yes uh, please tell me what will be the torque of this force about this axis what will be the torque of this force about which axis about this axis F not uh, L F not 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 L F a rotational effect about this axis and the torque due to this force will be equal to actually torque is defined as torque is defined as r cross f we need to understand what is the meaning of r r is a position vector from the axis r cross f i intentionally chose to do that you know my name yes all of you know that I commit some mistakes where I want to check your alertness levels. So I am not an idiot who's saying R cross F and not writing it. I want you to be attentive. Yes. Now, so torque due to a force is denoted by R cross F. We need to understand what is the meaning of R and how do we find that torque. Right now, you can also remember it in a very layman's language, which will be perpendicular. Yes, and you'll be clear about it very soon. Force into perpendicular distance from the axis. Force is F0 as you can see here. And the perpendicular distance from the axis between the force and the axis is L0. So the torque will be F into L0. Am I right? Yes, sir. This is the torque. Torque is equal to I alpha. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Why am I saying it will be equal to I alpha? Because the moment of inertia of the rod is constant here. It is not changing. If the moment of inertia is changing, then we cannot say it torque is equal to I. In linear motion, we have F is equal to MA, which is a particular case where you have 
F is equal to ma is when mass of a system is constant. And torque is equal to I alpha when? Uh, I, moment of inertia is constant. Correct. So here, the moment of inertia of the rod is constant and therefore we can write it as equal to I alpha. Now you can see that I can find alpha. Angular acceleration about that axis will be equal to F naught into L naught upon I which is ML square by 3. 3 will go up. So I this will be the angular acceleration. Let me take another simple example to explain torque again so that you realize that how a force tries to rotate or produces the angular acceleration let's be clear so we learn one case where we tried to find how a force was trying to rotate let me first define so please understand the rotational effect of a force is called torque torque the proper definition systematic definition i'll give you in few cases we'll just find out the torque and angular acceleration produced by the torque alpha and then we'll move on to questions. Just pay attention. I, I'll give you a simple case now again. If I tell you there is a block which is of mass m kept on a horizontal frictionless surface. This surface is friction. And I tell you there is a force F0 which is acting here. F0 is the force acting on this block. Now it is not passing through the center of mass. The height of the block is given by H0. M is the mass of the block. It's a cubical block. M0 is the mass of the block. Now please tell me, how do I find this force will produce a translational motion also as every force produces? What will be the acceleration of the center of mass? Tell me, how do I find? F0 by M0. F0 by M0. Yes. M0. So you can, the center of mass of the body is here. This is the center of mass. And if you apply the same force instead of, if this is true for any rigid body. All you have to do is, if you want to study the translational motion please understand this carefully if you just want to find out the translational acceleration or you want to study the translational motion all you have to do is you shift this force from wherever it is acting parallel to itself keeping its direction parallel to itself and magnitude same and make it pass through the line which is passing through the center of mass all you have to do is this you can always find the translational motion. So you shifted this force from here to a point which is to an axis which is passing through the center of mass parallel to itself. You will get the translational motion. I'll show you the proof of this also. Now just be very attentive. Translational motion. So I will apply a force F0 is equal to is the mass of the system remaining constant. So I'll get that the acceleration A is equal to F0 upon M. Please see this. And this Acceleration is the acceleration of the center of mass. Please write it down. This is the acceleration of the center of mass. Because in a rigid body, if it is having rotational motion as well, in that case, the acceleration of every point will be different. So this F is equal to MA gives you the acceleration of the center of mass and not any other point. Are you clear about this? How we can do this, why we can do this, I'll be showing you that also. I'll be illustrating why we can. If I want to study the, now, I want to go back to the original state. I do not want uh, to study the translational motion. I am interested only in the rotational motion. Will this block rotate? Yes. Will it rotate, yes or no? A normal force will produce a torque which will balance it till the time the force is, till the time normal can balance it and then, and then if the force is greater than that then it will produce a rotation. Yes, so please understand, it may topple, it may rotate or it may not rotate. If the torque due to the normal force, let me draw the free body diagram of this body and let me study what are the forces which are going to act on this body. Please pay attention to that. The one force which will be acting on this body will be mg gravitational force which will surely pass through its center of mass all of you know that uh, that and that will be mg yes this is one force what is the other force that you expect is acting normal reaction normal reaction is there any is there any friction force no, will the normal reaction be passing through the center of mass right now or will it shift? It will shift. It will it will shift. 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 Yes, please understand this mechanism. It's very important. The force earlier, we were just in, in Newton's laws of motion. We were treating the rigid body as a point mass. We were shifting all the forces to the center of mass. Right now, we have entered a little advanced topic called rotational motion. Now, the normal reaction, the, please see, if we do not apply a normal reaction, just see this, then one force is mg which is passing through the center of mass 
Is it producing any torque about the center of mass? No. Sir. No. The other force is this F naught. Actually, this is the force which is acting. Now tell me, is it producing a torque about center of mass? Yes. yes sir. And torque due to a force about any point is force into perpendicular distance. The easiest definition. And that torque due to this force about center of mass is how much? Can anyone tell me? It's not it's not by by F naught into S by Is it clockwise or anti-clockwise? Clockwise. Clockwise. So it will be a negative sign. Negative sign. No, not necessary. I can define clockwise to be positive. The convention is we take anti-clockwise to be positive. But uh, as I said in, in linear motion, when we were doing translational motion, kinematics, we chose downward direction to be positive, upward to be negative. It is our choice. So there is no hard and fast rule about that. So I am choosing, say, according to you, I choose clockwise direction to be positive. So you can see this force is trying to, if it is acting along this line, this is trying to rotate, make the body rotate about the center of mass. This is the perpendicular distance, which is H0 by 2. And it is trying to make it rotate in this direction. And this direction is clockwise. Therefore, this is the rotational effect of this force, and which is clockwise. And you people are advising me to choose it as negative, so I apply a negative. Now, please see this. There is a third force, normal reaction. I will find out where that normal reaction is acting. Right now, please tell me, due to these two forces, F0 and Mg, the body is having a net torque. And that torque is clockwise, which is trying to rotate the body in this direction, as I have already shown in this direction. Because of this kind of rotation, this part of the body is pressing against the table more, this side. This side of the body is pressing against the table more, and this side the other side, the other side is pressing less. Do you understand this? Because of this kind of yes. rotation, this side of the rigid body is pressing it more because the body has a turning effect like this and this side, this side, there is less pressure. Therefore, the normal reaction will shift towards right and the normal reaction will be acting somewhere like this on the rigid body. And this distance, suppose this is D0, D0 can be found. How do I find D0? If the block doesn't rotate, if the block is just sliding. So the net angular acceleration is zero. If the block doesn't rotate. Yes. So if the block doesn't rotate and it is just sliding, moving horizontally, in that case, net angular acceleration is zero. Therefore, net torque is zero. Net torque. Now, normal reaction is towards right and acting upwards. So the torque due to this about the center of mass will be, it is acting here. The perpendicular distance is this. D0. So the normal reaction torque will be positive, which is anti clockwise, and it will be equal to N0 into D0. And the net torque on the body should be zero if it is not accelerating. Angular acceleration is zero. This gives me D0 is equal to F0 H0 by 2 N0. So M0G. Yes. If we write the vertical motion equation, we know Mg minus N0 is zero. Because there is no acceleration of the body in vertical direction. Therefore, we know the value of N0 is equal to Mg. So, the answer is F0, H0 upon 2 Mg. This is the displacement of the normal reaction. So, instead of passing through the center of mass, the normal reaction has shifted a little right. Now, don't you think D0 has a limitation? Like you, maximum value of D0 can be what? It's not going to be It's a cube. So every dimension is H. Anyone else? Yeah. Who feels that these are bouncers? Don't waste your time. We'll be doing these topics in a systematic way later. Seeing the reaction, let me go a little more systematic. But the thing is, the whole objective of this. Right?